know, Montana is known as Big Sky Country, and everybody comes out here and they're impressed with the incredible views and the size and the scale of this place is sometimes breathtaking. And you think it's going to be here just like that forever, because it doesn't look too much different in some places than it did in 1850. The point being, it's a finite resource. As big as it is, as impressive as it is, it's still finite. And if you don't do something today to conserve the way it is, it may not be here in the future. The Ruby Valley is in southwest Montana. It is uh, southwest of Bozeman, about 90 miles. We're bordered by uh, three mountain ranges at the back of routes, the Ruby Mountains and uh, the Pioneers to the west. It's old, still lots of ranch families uh, making a living growing grass and, and feeding cows. But there's also a lot of folks like ourselves that have uh, wanted to be part of the Montana community. And Sheridan is a very interesting uh, community. It's only 800 people. We have no stoplights. We have no fast food restaurants. But if you want to have good people that have uh, their heart in the right place, the Ruby Valley is a great place to be. There's always something different to see. The scenery is changing with the seasons. It's beautiful. You've got the mountains. So that's really the part that I like. Our dogs are a big part of what we, our family, and how we entertain ourselves, and they're, they're as important to the experience as it is uh, pulling the trigger. Hops is a, we've got her from uh, the Wild Rose Kennel there in Mississippi, and uh, she has become, uh, the reason I like to hunt, honestly, the days when she's not participating, it's not as much fun. I work with them in terms of running the dogs a lot. They run with me, so I don't do a lot of retrieving or anything like that, so I just kind of exercise them is more what I do. Most hunting situations really are about obedience. I mean, uh, the last two days, Hops and Kurt, have, uh, we've hunted in a blind together. And for the most part, Hops has sat there uh, not bored, but certainly not antsy and waiting for the opportunity to do what she does. So that's the kind of stuff that I really enjoy when, and not, that's not my dogs, but anybody that's doing good dog work. Uh, a lot of that's just, hey, she knows her job is to sit there until it's time to do, do her thing. There's nothing better than seeing your dog really work or flush a bird or retrieve a bird. I've never not hunted ducks without a dog and having hops out here makes it a lot easier on us trying to instead of walk, having to walk through the slough and in the mud all the time you have hops out here working for us and she does a really good job and we didn't lose any birds on this hunt and that's that's a great thing I mean it's it's hard sometimes you lose one or two can't get them or something but the dogs make a huge difference and without them not a lot of it wouldn't be possible. Uh, the last couple of days have been a lot of fun. Like yesterday morning, we started off right at, right at first light. We had birds in the decoys and working. And I'm, it's an experience for me because I'm not used to having birds in so close. And I mean, we're only shooting 20 yards. And it's different. But the warm water sleuths is really cool because you get stuff that freezes over here. And it's normally pretty cold this time of year. So you, to hunt open water is kind of unique. There's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of farms, there's lots of grain fields around, but then you have these warm water sloughs and then you got the couple of rivers that go through this valley. And I mean, there's always open water for the ducks to end up coming, coming back to, but they have more food than they could ever ask for with all the grain fields, the alfalfa fields and everything all the farmers plant. You know, we have several managed wetlands 
that we put in specifically for migrating waterfowl. One of the things that we've done to ensure that this place is here in perpetuity is we put a wetland reserve easement on a portion of the property. So that means it'll be protected in perpetuity. And I think that's one of the things that we've done exceptionally well. The U.S. is very lucky that we don't think much about walking over and turning the tap and water comes out. And, and I work with uh, farmers and farmers are either need, they either have too much water or not enough water. And that kind of all kind of filters back to what we're doing with DU. I mean, we've got to have water for the future. And that leads to what DU is all about. I mean, we're, they are really about future generations and access to water. Now, the byproduct of that is, is ducks have a habitat that they can live in. And obviously hunters are the benefit of it. And this was a hunter organization, but at the end of the day, we're really kind of a water organization. Like Ducks Unlimited, it's, it's, like I said, it's not all about the hunting. It's, it's about the habitat management to keep birds around for future generations, really. A lot of people think Ducks Unlimited just does it for the ducks, and, but the habitat that they restore, the habitat that they help out, it, it does a lot for white-tailed deer. And you got the pheasants, you got even doves in different places, and you could go on a huge list of birds and animals. At Ducks Unlimited it helps it all. All the habitat helps it all. This, this place touches people in ways that go beyond what you see. You spend a couple hours out here, a half a day or a day fishing, and, and you walk away different than when you showed up.